Hey guys, ZW here and today I am hungry for some potato. Too bad none of the toy companies have ever made a screen accurate Mr. Potato Head. Not even the Toy Story collection. I have here a really ugly one. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, no. These are so bad, I don't even want to review them. This is the first time I honestly feel that there is just no way I could salvage any parts and there is also nothing worth scanning because they all look like poo poo. However, I am grateful for the back compartment. At least I can learn how they did it and replicate it. So I guess we have to start from scratch. Or do we? Well, this is one of the rarest occasions where my accounting degree comes in handy. And that is how to Google. Yep, it's completely useless. After scouring through the usual 3D model sites and encountering some really interesting models, you wouldn't believe where I found what I needed. YouTube. Who would have thought a time-lapse video would be any useful? But if you look closely, there is a download link. This ultimately generous YouTuber by the name of Rosy3D has gracefully shared their Mr. Potato model for free. Something I would probably never do because... So thank you Rosy, you are a lifesaver and this is certainly a time saver. Remove the background in Blender and export it to ZBrush to modify it. At first glance, it might look really accurate but after comparing it with screenshots from the movie, it seems like we still have a lot of work to do. The body looks a little too slim, the edges of the ears are too defined, the nose is too thin, the moustache is too flat and the head has a really weird thin edge along the rim. But I do love the shoes, they are just... Let's start with the head by removing that thin edge and thickening it. Adjusting the shapes according to the references, slash that line across the head and I think it's not bad. For the eyebrows, it's totally wrong, we gotta redo it completely. Toy Story 1 eyebrows are actually not a mirror image like what I'm doing here. Both of them have the same left to right strokes. However, Toy Story 3 changed it to a mirror image, which is good news, but not really. It's the wrong mirror. Totally opposite strokes of what I'm doing, let's just pretend that I didn't know and move on to his mouth. Which is another frustratingly interesting body part that changed throughout the movies. I mean the freaking toy mode mouth changed twice. In the first movie from a pout to a smile and then in Toy Story 3 it became a straight line. Man I don't even want to check Toy Story 4. I decided to take this opportunity to engage my wonderful community, hoping that they will make my life easier and choose the most definitive mouthpiece. But the general consensus turned out to be uh, all three. Come on, man, that's not helpful at all. S screw it, I'm just choosing the smiling mouth. For the mustache, it's straightforward, no nonsense, right? I highly doubt it changed shapes in subsequent films. Please don't tell me it grew longer like a regular mustache. I don't want to know. It's just about giving it a little more curves, grooming those lines to make them more defined, basically trying to make our potato head look more manly. Oh, yeah. Now the ears, which was too thin, so I'm gonna thicken it. Okay, not that thick. We want to dig his ears a little, soften the edges, sharpen his inner ear, flatten the sides, and just when I thought it's done, great. There's an indent at the back, which is probably the result of plastic injection molding from the factory. How the hell am I supposed to replicate it digitally? I tried masking the back and digging the ear from the back, but it just looked really messy, so I masked the front, duplicated them, scaled them smaller, and cut it out of the original ear. Yeah, something like that. And thus, we no longer have the excuse to ignore the shoes. I don't know, it just looks like 7 tubes connected by some rectangles, which is exactly what I mean. 
For the arms, I started with this really sweet photo of the potato heads holding hands, aww. Adjusting the fingers and even added the molding line across the arms to sell it. And then it hit me that the Toy Story 1 potato had a different arm in the first movie. Probably because he didn't have someone to hold. Mrs. Potato Head! Hey, I can dream, can I? He had sausages for fingers. But since I already made the Toy Story 3 arm, fine. You win, I am going to straighten the smile into a lifeless tube so that we can have the Toy Story 3 look. And since we have the Toy Story 1 mouth, we might as well make the bendy arms too, to have the Toy Story 1 look. I know there's actual bendy arms for sale, but I didn't know it came in a bucket. I don't know if I will get it since I don't plan on bending his arms anyway. He's for display only. After giving them a little color to see the parts more clearly, I adjusted the eyeballs and now we have both arms. Yay. Everything is more or less done, I'm just gonna add some texture to the body by adjusting the intensity of the noise and the curve to mimic a potato. To attach all the parts to that potato, we're gonna use some cylinders. If you refer to the movie, he actually has a certain portion of the connector showing. In order to replicate that, I made the top narrower and the base thicker so that insertion is smooth but controlled. Now we just duplicate the same cylinders for all the other parts and add a flat attachment for the moustache with a hole through it. There you go, a potato with holes. After cutting the potato in half, we are finally attempting the bag compartment. Fun fact, he didn't have it in the first movie but magically opened up his backside for his missus in Toy Story 2. Now we know who's the boss in this relationship. I just simply copied the toy that I bought, a ball joint and a square stopper by the side. To aid the opening, I dug out a semicircle above and on the insides of the flap. Hopefully it works. And now I present Mr. Potato Head with all his parts. Wow. Finally, we are ready to print. And we are ready to print. And we are ready to print. That's right, we printed three times. That's almost three days of printing back to back. And it's only possible with our very reliable Formlabs printer. Yeah, I'm just trying to loan a bigger printer from 3L from them because apparently they do that. Formlabs sent it to me in order for me to, to borrow it, to print some things with it. And we really need that if we want to print Trixie or Benson. So I don't know, tag them on social media and help me gain their attention. They might be reliable, but they are really expensive. That's why I am really grateful to our new members of the coffee crew. Joe Master, NNN, Panjo, Defiant, and Jen for the Sandpaper membership. Yes, I just changed the tiers to be more relevant to our channel. Hope you guys like it. And also our one-offs, Contra, Base, and Roman. Thank you all for the sandpaper that I will be using today. But actually, resin prints don't require much sanding. Like this body that I printed at 50 microns layer height, which it's good enough details for all the rough potato skin textures. We just need to cut the support residues, sand the bottom, and that should be all we have to do for the other parts. Except, I accidentally skirt the arms a little bigger. According to Cop, Mr. Potato Head is about 18.8 cm. I counted the squares. So I scaled mine to the same size and rounded down to 2.609% bigger. And over 10 parts I scaled correctly, but the arms I scaled it to 2.69%. Hence requiring a little more sanding to fit. Also, there is a new beta settings that is called Adaptive, which is basically different layer thickness depending on the details of your 3D model. And I foolishly tried it when printing all the other accessories, and that resulted in a very uneven layer for all of them as you can see from the hat. We have no choice, we have to send them all thoroughly. And that should be the last of the sending. Let's clean things up and move on to the eyebrows. Why the eyebrows? Cause it doesn't have a hole to insert in place. It's just sticking on a potato with some kind of movie magic. But in real life, that's an issue we can fix with some magnets. I have here a pretty small magnet, but it's still not small enough for the eyebrows. 
but it's okay because I have an even smaller magnet. It's so tiny! And I think it works fine. I'm just gonna drill a small hole and glue the magnet onto it. While we wait for that to dry, let's get ready for painting. If only it were that easy. After a quick grey prime, excuse my thumb, it's even more obvious that our sanding journey is far from over. Look at the jagged edges here and the layer line on the nose. It's definitely more obvious on this shoe. Back to sanding, I guess. Ah, let me save you the agony, or perhaps it's enjoyment for you sadistic people. Oh, oh kaputana. To fill the holes up, I'm gonna try a new tool that is UV party. Not much difference from clay really, it's just using UV light to cure it instead of a heat gun. And oh look, it works. <laughs> Sorry, all the sanding just drained all my enthusiasm away. Uh, I, but I think we can finally paint. Some black for the black part, white for the white part, and oh, the eyes is not smooth! <laughs> anyway, the compartment works! Yay! So I kind of suck at matching colours and I've only recently managed to find the right colour for skin. So this is probably going to take a few tries to get right. Oh holy shit. I tried my best to match what I see but sometimes I just don't have the right colours with me. So some parts may look a little off. But I guess I can always repaint. Oops, I did not cover the holes for the shoes because I don't care about the back. After painting the mouthpieces and the black on the eyes, I used a lot of pledge floor gloss to gloss every single piece. Like a lot of gloss. And we are done. Oh man, I really thought this would be a quick project, but it took like two weeks. I think I managed to replicate his toy mode look in Toy Story 1, with his eyebrows on the eyes and his sausage looking fingers. Maybe I will do his Toy Story 3 look when I do Mrs. Potato Head. After painting and assembly, the ear seems to be too small and the arms might be too high up. We do have some extra parts like mouthpieces, a yo-yo, angry eyes, not really, monkeys and oh what's this? This is me appreciating you guys for watching the video. Consider supporting the channel by joining the coffee crew. Stay tuned and I will see you next time.